And now, another timely and powerful message from Pastor Emmanuel Williams and Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee. Breaking free in 2023. Amen. Because uh, the truth be told, um, we need to break free. It is a process. Amen. From concepts, ideologies, thinking patterns, Amen. Behaviors. We need to break free and um, get closer to Jesus Christ. So I want to continue from Jeremiah chapter 33 tonight. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. A verse, we'll start from verse 1. But by way of introduction, let me say that um, what was happening back then during the time is God had a word for the nation of Israel. Uh, to free them from impending judgment which uh, was about to be unleashed upon them by the Babylonians. So, However, the man of God through whom the message had to come was in prison. He was imprisoned by the king at that time. His name was Je. I think he's... Uh, I forgot his name. But Jeremiah told him the truth. Jeremiah said to the king, the Babylonians are coming. They are going to succeed. The king did not like that. He listened to the other prophets. And he said to, I think in this Jeremiah chapter 32, I think the name of the king is listed there. And um, he liked the other prophets' message. We are going to succeed. We are going to succeed. God is good. He's worked it out for us in the past. And he's, just, he's going to. But Jeremiah said, no king. There is impending judgment. And the king got mad and placed the man of God in prison. And, uh, you know, I will tell you, Jeremiah is sitting there and um, he's asking himself, I thought I did the Lord's will. <laughs> I thought I did what the Lord told me to do. It seems like I made a mistake. Amen. So here is the sin. Amen. S-E-S-C-E-N-E. -E, the nation of Israel for God God. The prophet of God is imprisoned. He is discouraged, dejected. He gave up. Amen. Because he's saying, Lord, what did I do? I thought I did your work. And here am I in prison. Amen. And so God wants to free the nation. But he has to free the man first. Amen. And so that's where Jeremiah, that's where this is the background for this particular text and so we are told here in verse 1 jeremiah chapter 33 verse 1 and the reason why brothers and sisters i want to continue this is because i believe not i believe i know the lord gave me this uh, particular message or this text to teach on the last day of 2022 and of course this evening i wanted to continue it uh, and knowing that there are some things we need to break free from uh, uh, 2023 is a year um, as, as I said, I just felt the Lord was ministering to me when I was <clears throat> studying that there are some things we need to break free from. Some habits, some concepts, some ideas, some ideologies, some uh, thinking patterns, as I said earlier on. Just, just things that are th unnecessary things we got ourselves into that's taking up our time. We need to free ourselves from, our, from, from the things which take up most of our time, which took up most of our time in 2022. And so, while the prophet here seemed to have four walls around him, we to a certain extent can put four, four walls around us, metaphorically. Amen? So we are told here in uh, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 1 to 3, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. What came unto him? The word of the Lord. Amen? We are not told how the word of the Lord came to the man of God. But we are aware that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. How many of you thank God for the word of the Lord? Amen. It came to Jeremiah just when he needed it. Can you tell your neighbor, God is a just-in-time God. Yeah, just-in-time. Sometimes you may need an encouragement. Amen. Sometimes you just need a word from the Lord. Looking for direction. Lord, what should I do? And here is Jeremiah sitting down. Amen. In the... Uh, let, let's read. You'll see where he was. Uh, let me start from verse 1 again. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. The what? The second time. What happened to the first time? <laughs> the man is disappointed. 
Amen. How many of you would agree? Sometimes we get disappointed. Our expectations are not met. Amen. Especially when we want it at a certain time. It doesn't come a certain time. We get disappointed and I thank God for his mercy endures forever. God speaks again. So we have here God speaking to the man of God a second time. Can you say a second time? Yeah, God is a God of a second chance. Amen. Third chance. Praise the Lord. So we are told there a second time. While he was yet shut up in the court of prison. That's where he was. The king placed him in prison because he told the king. The Babylonians are on, are on the way king and they are going to succeed. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. King got mad, placed him in prison. But the word of the Lord. Amen. Came to him. What did the, Lord of, what did the word of the Lord said? It says, uh huh, say in verse 2, we got a verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord in his name. And notice what God is, God is talking, can you go back to uh, verse 2? God is talking about the nation of Israel because he has a word for the nation of Israel. He is concerned. Amen. He's concerned. The people were surrounded by the invaders for 18 months. Amen. The people's food and water supplies were being depleted. People were starving and dying of thirst. And he's seated in prison and he's thinking about the nation of Israel. And God is saying, Jerry, that's how they call him. <laughs> I made, I was the one who formed <laughs> Israel. I'm more concerned about Israel than you are. Amen. So God said, look, the Lord formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Amen. He is the one. I am the one who formed the nation of Israel. I can deliver. Amen. The nation of Israel. So he's seated there. Amen. And he's, um, he's uh, complaining and he's murmuring and God had to speak to him a second time. Amen. When did God have to speak to him? A second time. While he was still shut up in prison. Sometimes it's sometimes we need to be reminded more than one time. More than one time. Amen. Sometimes we need to, re, need to be reminded more than one time. Sometimes we need to hear the word of God more than one time. How many of you would agree? Sometimes one time doesn't do it. <laughs> Especially when you are held hostage by a need. Sometimes you are, you are so focused Mm -hmm. on a particular need sometimes you're so focused on a particular result we cannot hear what God is saying because we are so full uh, let me use that word held hostage by that particular need or held hostage by that particular expectation and sometimes God has to speak to us a second time look tonight maybe God if you're looking tonight maybe you've been told you need to break free this is the second time you're hearing it mm-hmm Maybe you need to break, break free from uh, uh, some things you've entangled yourself in. Got yourself busy unnecessarily. Uh-huh. Well, maybe not. All right. So the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And what did the Lord say? We said the Lord said, uh, notice what God said in verse 2. I want you to see a key word that's been used. Three times we see a particular word used here in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 2. Notice, thus saith the Lord, uh -huh, the, maker of, the maker thereof, the, see how many times, that formed it, to establish it, the, is his name and God is God is pounding away God is pounding away at the word Lord because the word Lord here is Yahweh it means it is God's covenant keeping name and God is saying I have a covenant of Israel I am the Lord and I can deliver uh-huh on my covenant praise the Lord so don't you be there murmuring and uh, making it a problem I am coming to ensure that I deliver Israel so he says the Lord said I made it and I formed it, amen. And, and 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 God is using, as I said, the word Lord to convey a message to his servant. Praise the Lord. I am the covenant keeping God. I have the wherewithal, I have the resources, amen, needed to get you out. 
Amen. I need you to do one thing. And you'll see what God is going to tell him to do in a while. God is saying, I will come through. That's what God is saying when you see the word Lord in upper in uppercase letters. God is saying, I am the covenant keeping God. I have a covenant and I will come through. Mm -hmm. I will what? Come through for my people. Amen. And if you're here tonight, let me just tell you, God will come through for you. The Bible says we have a better covenant based on better promises. We have a part to play just like you see Jeremiah has a, had a part to play. And I'm saying why didn't God just stop the Babylonians? <laughs> sometimes you would like that. Well, sometimes you would like that right? God just intervene. No but that's not the way God does things. And that is why sometimes we get frustrated. Uh, you know thunderbolt from heaven just come and just destroy all the Babylonians. That would be our preferred way. No but God wants to get you involved. Amen. Because the Bible says that God, uh, God wants to work through imperfect vessels so he can get the glory and the honor. That's God's preferred way. So God is going to release the man of God. Amen. Are you with me? But he has to do something. Let's see what he has to do. Now, 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 now there, is, there, is a, there is a word here I don't want to overlook. Notice, it, the last two words in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 2 is, The Lord is what? His name. We cannot miss that. His name. Amen. God's name carries everything about God. His name carries his honor. His name carries his authority. Amen. His name carries his character. All who he is is in his name. That is why the Bible says in Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a what? Strong tower. The righteous you and I, we can run in and find what? Safety. How do you run into the name of the Lord? Amen. How do you do that? How do you run into the name of the Lord? Well, what you begin to do is acknowledge God. You begin to confess what the Bible says about God. You make God large. Are you with me? Amen. That's why it's important to know the word of God. So you can run into the name of the Lord. You can affirm what the Bible says about God. Open up your mouth and say what the word says. Amen. We are told in Psalms 20 verse 7, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the amen i think i said i said uh psalms 20 verse 7 some trust in horses some trust in chariots but we will do what yeah you got the name of the lord jesus did say in mark chapter 16 verse 16 and 17 in my name in whose name in my name yes thank you can somebody say thank god for the name of the lord Yes, yes, you got to thank God for the name of the Lord. Jesus said in my name, when Peter preached, you remember Peter, Peter's first sermon, uh, uh, after he healed the, the man that was lame from birth, sitting at the gate beautiful, they asked Peter, how did you do this? Hmm? They looked at Peter like he was some type of uh, an eternal being. Peter, where did you get that superpower? Peter said, it's not me, but he said, is, he said it is that name and faith <laughs> in that name. That's what brought healing to that man. Are you with me, saints? So that's what Jesus, so that's what God is, the, the very same thing God is telling Jeremiah here. The Lord is his what? Name. I thought his name was I am the I am. I'm just, <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he told Moses. Are you getting, oh, Father, we thank you. The Lord is his name. Tell somebody we've got a name. Yeah, we've got a name we can run into. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. And so he moved on. He said, now, Jeremiah, uh, this is what I want you to do. Can you go to Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3? He said, this is what I want you to do to get out of your prison. This is the first thing I want you to do. Amen. And sends the very same thing to us. About, uh, uh, the, the, the application here is if we find ourselves in some type of conundrum. Can I use that word? <laughs> some type of quagmire. Can I use that word? <laughs> Just some, if you find yourself tied up somewhere somehow, you can break free. But there is a formula you need to follow. You have to realize that you and I, we must be equal participants in our salvation. 
And it's not all on God. We have a responsibility. Since I tell you, in all my years as a spiritual leader, I have to be, this is one of two things in all my years as a spiritual leader I come across. People not wanting to be participants in their salvation. And secondly, people not knowing how to use the Bible to pray. It, it, you know, and, and you see, you throw up the Bible. You see the very same thing. And so that is why most times people are just quiet. God told Jeremiah here to call upon me. If God tells you to call upon him, what are you going to do? You, you got to know something about him. Well, maybe not nobody said amen, but that's okay. <laughs> if God tells you to call upon him, you ought to know something about him. Hmm? Because we, we, we just read his name is like a strong tower. Some trust in other things, but we trust in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you, if he says to call upon me, and he said, there is a guaranteed response. Look right here. He said, he said, Jeremiah, the way you get out of your prison. And I'm sharing with you, brothers and sisters, the way you get out of, the way we get out. If you're looking tonight and you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, the way you get out of it, you need to start calling on the name of Jesus. Yeah, you got to call on the name of Jesus. Amen. A command to call on Yahweh and a guaranteed response of answered praise. Amen. So you call, you call on the Lord. He said, Jeremiah, now it's time to open up your mouth and start praying. Now it's time to open up your mouth and start praising. Amen. That's what you do when you find yourself in a prison. You start making God large. Brothers and sisters, you remember in Acts chapter 16, uh, Paul and Silas find themselves in a real prison. Now some of us are not in a real prison. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But Paul and Silas find themselves in a real prison, beaten, bloody. Their feet were between the stalks and they began to do what? Call upon the Lord. You know the verse. The Bible says they began to call upon the Lord and the prisoners began to say, what's going on? Uh, the prisoners saying something is wrong. These men are beaten, bloody, mm, can barely move their feet, are in stalks, uh, in the lowest part of the dungeon and they are calling on the name of the Lord. Yes, that's what the Bible says. Call unto me. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. We look at what great and mighty means. I never knew what mighty meant, meant until I studied over the, the past week. Glory be to God. Are you with me, saints? I didn't mean to get loud. I'm just getting a little excited. <laughs> hey, we got help. Amen. I'm telling you, we got help in 2023 to break free. Are you with me, saints? Don't just sit there talking about one day I'm going to break free. No, no. We got help. Paul and Silas begin to praise the Lord and they begin to send praises unto him. Glory be to God. And the Bible says and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. What did they call? Can you go back to verse 20? Glory be to Jesus. Prayed and sang pray. What did he do? Sang pray. That's what you do when you call upon the Lord. You begin to bring up these old psalms, these old hymns, hmm? these old hymns. What a blessedness. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm leaning I'm leaning safe and secure from all I am. I would miss it. You begin to call upon the name of Jesus. Anybody know an old hymn I could I could borrow out there? Do you have an old hymn I could use out there? Glory be to God. Amen. This is oh, is, is this a young church? Maybe it is. <laughs> you, you got to go back then and pick up some of these old hymns. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Uh, uh, there's a, the, what's, the, what's the favorite one we sang in here? Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. You have me singing all these new songs. I forgot the old hymns. Praise the Lord. Amen. But that's what <laughs> they began to do. And the prisoners heard them. Uh, then the prisoners did what? Heard them. And notice what happened. That's what God is. The, the Bible says, and what? Suddenly. Hmm. There was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were what? Shake. You want your foundation of your prison to shake. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. You want things to start moving in your life. Amen. You want the devil to pick up his stuff and start running. Hey, right here. A prison was shaken and immediately. We got a suddenly and, and immediately. How many of you are interested in suddenlies and immediatelys? Well, yeah, you got to learn to call on the name of the Lord. You got to start praising the Lord. And notice when Paul and Silas praised God, it was a sacrificial praise. They were bloody. Who's going to praise God when they're bloody? Uh, but Jeremiah was complaining, not Paul, not Silas. Glory be to God. Amen. They, were, they began to pray. You, you see, they knew something you and I do not know. 
They have been you something about praise and worship you and I do not know. Since the Bible says that immediately all the doors were opened. Anybody interested in open doors? Yeah, yeah, open doors. It's right here. If you are interested in open doors, all you got to do is start calling on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 33. 3. The Bible is consistent. God told Jeremiah, call unto me and I'll answer you. Paul and Silas did what? Called. And the Bible says, that is why, you, you know what came down in the prison? The glory of God. The meaning of glory is wait. Wait. You, wait. This is what happened. The glory of God. God came down. You remember when God came down on Mount Sinai? And the mountain began to quake. Because God had to wait. <laughs> oh, glory be. And so God came down. Amen. He took a seat. God just decided to just come. And the doors, the prison doors were open. And people's shackles got loose. Amen. God just came. The glory, the weight of God. Can somebody say wait? Yeah, yeah. That's what we need in 2023. Wait to get free. Mm, we need the weight of God to break free every door and to break free the bands, amen, the shackles that held us in 2022. We need to break free in 2023. Break free from our own ideologies and concepts of who God is and how we must behave, amen, in church. Get free. I cannot wait for the time when in front here, right here, we'll have people just jumping and shouting and praising God. I have an image in my mind, brothers and sisters, and I'm believing God for it to manifest. For all here, just people just shouting and pray during praise and worship. Guess who will be at the front? Moi. I'll be leading them. <laughs> I got some shackles too. I with I got some. I need to get. I'm going somewhere with my freedom. Oh yeah, I'll praise God. I can't wait. That's. The, I have an image in my mind, and God, I thank you. One day is going to happen. We're going to be leaping and dancing and praising God like the man who got healed. He was leaping, jumping, and praising God. Oh hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. And so you may be out there today like Jeremiah. Amen. I just God just gave us another exhibit, Paul and Silas. Amen. <laughs> I didn't not I didn't have that in my notes, but the Lord saw it fit to bring it up. And so we are here. Here we are told here that God told Jeremiah, call on my name. Amen. Call upon me. Call upon me. That's what you need to do. Stop murmuring in the prison and call upon me. You have, I, I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. Amen. One commentator adds, uh, um, the, uh, call upon me. Uh, 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 he, was, he said, little prayer, little blessing. <laughs> more prayer, more blessing. Much prayer, much blessing. Little more much. Hmm? Another one said the promise is extremely impressive. Listen, listen, listen to when God promised Jeremiah. The promise is extremely impressive in light of the situation. Here's why. They're on the brink of a siege. Impending judgment right at their doorsteps. Yet God gave Jeremiah and Jerusalem a message of invitation, hope and faith. Right on the brink. Surrounded by the enemy surround for 18 months nobody's going in nobody's coming in nobody's going out that's what the devil wants to do that's why these people need to break free the devil what he does he comes around that's what he does and he shuts down your supply that's what it he he's and then you feel you feel strained Mm -hmm. strain so you can just so you can just break away and say God is not good oh, that's what he wants you to do he wants you to disagree with God he wants you to that's what he wants you to do since but don't you agree with him and God said if you call upon me Jeremiah I'm going to show you great now, now listen the word mighty usually it means this is powerful stuff since here that mighty means that which is inaccessible hold on god said i'll show you great and mighty that which is inaccessible mighty things hidden things which is beyond the normal reach of human knowledge 
God said, I'll give you a way out that's, that's out of the ordinary. I'll give you revelation knowledge about your situation and show you how to break free in 2023. But you first need to call upon me so I can give you mighty things. You've got a part to play. You've got to make me large. You've got to call upon me. You've got to pray and praise. Uh, glory be to God. So I can show you great and mighty things. Look, saints, there is always a way out. But only God knows that way. And he'll show you the way when you call upon him. When you open up your mouth, there is always a way to break free. There is always. God is supernatural. God is not limited. But God wants you and I. To call upon him. That's why he said to Jeremiah. Call upon me Jeremiah. You know better. You know better. You're a preacher. You're a prophet. You know better. I'm inviting you. In 2023. To take this approach. That's it. I'm all the way in with God. All my time, my free time, I'm going to use it to do the exercise, but the rest is for God. <laughs> you do that in 2023, it'll change your life. At the end of 2023, your life will never be the same again. Never be the same. Never. Because everything you need, the Lord has it. Everything you need. And how many of you want to break free from being single just that's my point uh, you uh, don't you don't you want to break free from being single no she don't okay all right she's watching should i or should i not that may be a problem <laughs> yeah you want to break free from that there is a way the bible says call upon me and i will what answer you and show you show you the way out Dickness, that's what he'll do, show you the way out. Elder, that's what he'll do, he'll show you the way out. Amen? That, he'll show you the way out, that's, that's what he does. He specializes in unconventional ways. In unconventional means. That's what the word mighty means. Amen? The things to be revealed are unsearchable. That's what it means, literally, inaccessible. Because they are beyond the grasp of human knowledge. Mighty things, that's what he's saying. God will show you things. It's called revelation knowledge. It's beyond the grasp of human knowledge. Wow. Isn't that a blessing? You got God who created the universe on your side. Mm -hmm. Now this is the idea. You remembered when, uh, when the thieves were sent, not the thieves, the ten spies were sent to, to spy on Canaan. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 28, the city was walled up. You remember the Bible? You remember the Bible says that. It's right here. You can read it. Deuter you don't have to turn there. But it's Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 20. They came back and they said, The cities are walled up. We can't get in there. This is the idea of, of uh, um, mighty things. There are some things that human, the human mind cannot access. It's walled up, and only God can make a way. Only God can make a way. Only God can give you direction. But you need to do what? What's the first thing? Call upon Him. Call upon him. Call upon him. God, I told you 30 minutes, 30 minutes is up. up. My goodness. Let, let, let me show this to you. Jump over to verse 11 quickly. And I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you um, uh, something that will really help you in, 20, 20, in um, 2023. Jeremiah 33 verse 11. It says, uh, uh, verse 11 says, Now call upon me. This is what God is telling Jeremiah. It's elaborated here for us uh, in verse, uh, verse 11. Is it verse 11? Part B. Yeah, go down where you see. Oh, let's read it. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness. God is saying, I'm going to bring back gladness and joy. And, and marriage and everything and the voice of the bride and the voice of them that shall say say what pray that's what he's talking about praise the lord of what host praise him that's what it means to call upon him it's a prayer of praise a prayer of thanksgiving not mourning and groping and griping are you with me so you got to what praise the lord of hosts for the lord is what good and his mercy is endures for what I'm going to show you this right here since God is telling Jeremiah two things you need to do. You need to start praising me and you need to be cognizant of the fact that my mercy endures forever. Psalms 136. 
Let me show it to you right here. I got to show you something in Psalms 136. Psalms 136. The entire Psalm talks about for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks. Uh, God wants to yeah, yeah, because you see you need to hold the reason why you're going to call on God it, regardless of what situation you're in is because you need to know in your mind that God's mercy endures because if you do not know that the devil is going to come to you and tell you he doesn't care about you he doesn't love you that's how that's where Jeremiah was Jeremiah thought God forgot about him that's why the Bible says the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time the first time he didn't get it. A second time. And so the Bible says here, uh, I, got to, I got to run, I got to run. I'm, 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 <laughs> oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And it is so, so that's point two. Point number two, you got to remember that God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Give thanks here means, give thanks here means to confess or acknowledge. Give acknowledgement. Make confession. That's what give thanks mean. Just, look, just, just acknowledge and, and, and confess that God is good. Why? For he's good. For what? For he is what? Good. He's a good God. He's a good. Can somebody say he's a good God? Look, fundamental to all God is and does is the reality that he is good. God is motivated by goodness. Whatever he does, it, he does it because he's good and he's love. It doesn't matter what you see in the Old Testament. I've had people say to me, Pastor, all this killing uh, in the Old Testament, why did God ask them to annihilate an entire uh, community? It's because God was trying to preserve, God was trying to preserve humanity. These people were demon possessed. They engaged, they engaged in all type of debauchery. The devil was using them to mix with Israel. So Jesus would not come. Let me ask you, if you have cancer, if you have cancer in your left hands and it's coming up, wh what do they do? Cut it off. That's what God did. He just what? Some of you are afraid to say it. <laughs> he just cut it off. It was a bad, it was a bad arm or a bad leg. He just what? Cut it off to preserve the body. That's, that's all that's happening. He's doing it because he is good. He, he's, he's doing it because he had you and I in mind. He, he had Jesus in mind to come to regain power and authority over the devil. Are you with me? He had us in mind. That's why he did it. The verse continues here. He's good and for his mercy what? Mercy here means loving kindness. It's not what you think. It means loving kindness. What is loving kindness does? Endureth for what? The word endureth here means vanishing point. Generally, time out of mind. It means eternity. God's, are you getting what the Bible is saying? God's loving kindness is past eternity. Humans will die over and over and over and over. And God's loving kindness just keep going. It's going to pass the vanishing point. You need to know that about God. He'll help you. Yeah, when thoughts come, when thoughts of doubt, and when the devil tell you that God doesn't care about you, 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 it is a lie. Because we are told, that's why you need to know the word of God. All of Psalms 136 talks about, verse, let me just show you quickly. For that matter, when, 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 when I do my quiet time, I am always in Psalms 136 because I try to pattern my quiet time after the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I cannot, I cannot pray the Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name without closing the Bible. I need to get in God's word. Or else I'm going to use my own opinion. I'm going to mess up. Well, <laughs> uh, if you need to hallow God's name, you have to do it using his word. Amen. So the Psalms 1. Uh, can you bring up, I'm going to bring it to a close. Can you bring up the exhibit? Let me show you what Psalms 133, 136 is about. I have to, I promise you 35 minutes. Look, look, look at the outline of Psalms 136. Verses 1 to 4 talks about the enduring mercy of God in his essential nature, who he is. Verse 5 to 9 talks about the enduring mercy of God in his work as creator. 
I mean, so you go and you hallow in his name. It tells you right here how God stretched the earth, how God met the heavens. I'm talking about the three heavens. And you begin to go in God's word and begin to pray God's word. God, you met the three heavens. You met the sky. You met the... Sea. You begin to hallow his name. Amen. Verses 10 to 15 talks about the enduring mercy of God in the deliverance from Egypt. And you say, Father, you are the same God of yesterday, today, and forever. If you deliver them from Egypt, sure enough, you can deliver me from where I am today. I be, Are you getting what I'm saying, saints? Verse 16 to 22, the enduring mercy of God from the wilderness to the promised land. Do you know the amount of things that could happen to the Israelites in the wilderness? From the, God protected them from danger, sin and unseen. There was a cloud, a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. And brothers and sisters, we have the very same thing. Are you with me, saints? That's what I'm talking. That's how you call upon God. That's how you make God large. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you have the glory of God. Doors are going to be broken. Bands are going to be loosed. Are you with me, saints? He continues, verse 23 to 25, the enduring mercy of God in ongoing deliverance and help. Ongoing deliverance and help. Isaiah 41.10, our last text. Let me show you Isaiah 41.10. Every morning, I pray that Isaiah 41.10, it says, uh -huh. let me show you. <laughs> Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am whom? It's right there. I will what? Strengthen you. I will what he said? Help. It's right there. He said that. God said, I'm going to do what? Strengthen you. I'm going to do what? Help you. I'm going to uphold you with my right hand up. That's what he says. He said, I'm going to. Anybody here needs help? <laughs> he said I'm going to help you he said I'm going to strengthen you well you know where strength come strength come from praising God the Bible says in, in Psalms 8 to God has ordained strength in the mouth of babes and sucklings to steal the enemy and the avenger so the strength of God comes when you begin to call <laughs> upon the Lord when you begin to hallow his name and call upon his name and give him praise and he said certainly I'm going to answer you he didn't say right away <laughs> he didn't say right away but I know his promises are good the Bible says all the promises of God 2 Corinthians 1 20 all the promises of God are yes all the promises of God in Christ anybody give God praise anybody thank God for God Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm breaking free in 2023. You're looking tonight, say, I'm breaking free in 2023 because I've got a praise. <laughs> I know how to call on my father. I know how to call on God. Father, we thank you and we praise you tonight. If you're looking tonight and you are not saved, you need to break free from that old lifestyle. You're, you've been saying, Father, you've been saying, Lord, help me. Here's the help you've been asking for. Tonight, pray this prayer with me and you'll move directly from the power the influence of the devil to the kingdom of God say heavenly father I recognize I'm a sinner I have no strength I can't help myself tonight I I agree you send Jesus to take away my sins say Jesus I make you my Lord say tonight say Jesus I make you my Lord now and forever amen and amen if you pray this prayer you just move from darkness into his marvelous light. Send us some information at iogmtally at gmail.com iogmtally at gmail.com and we'll send you some information and pray with you. Amen. Anybody love the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Anybody's going to call upon the name of the Lord? Break free in 2023? Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you. Please take time to meditate on the Word and let it sink into your heart and soul and mind today. Knowing that the Christian who meditates on the Word will be like a tree planted by the water, bringing forth fruit in its season and prospering in all that he does. But what if you aren't a Christian today? What if you don't know if you're bound for heaven as a forgiven child of God? If that's you, then let's take care of it right now if you're ready. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Are you ready to be forgiven of your sins and washed clean and made new? Are you ready to begin your new life in Christ? Then turn to God right now and say, Lord, 
I love you. I need you. I repent of my sins. Lord, please forgive me and wash me clean. I receive your forgiveness right now as I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. God, please lead me and teach me and show me how to live from now on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you're looking for a good church family, you'll be welcomed with open arms at Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee, located at 4750 Capital Circle Southeast near Tram Road. Sunday school begins for all ages at 10 a.m. and the morning service begins at 11. And the Wednesday evening service begins at 7. This is a life-giving, multicultural, multi-generational church where people of all races, backgrounds, and walks of life come together to worship, to be inspired in their love for God, to develop relationships, and to be empowered to live out God's purpose for their lives. Find more information on their website, imitatorsofgodministries.com, or call the church, 850-408-8496. 